This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Rocky Marciano is the featured boxer in this edition of the Top 5 Notable Wins series. And to this day, Marciano holds the unique distinction of being the only heavyweight world champion to retire and remain retired with an undefeated record. As always, I'm sure there will be some disagreement over which five victories constitute the most notable in the case of Marciano, but I personally believe things are fairly straightforward here. So let's go through a quick chronology of what I consider to be the top five notable wins during the decorated career of the Brockton blockbuster, Rocky Marciano. On October 26, 1951 at Madison Square Garden in New York, New York, up-and-coming undefeated heavyweight contender Rocky Marciano squared off against former longtime heavyweight world champion Joe Lewis. Things began tactically with Marciano looking to find his way inside. Once there, Lewis was doing a good job tying Rocky up and smothering his work. Lewis soon started having some spots of success at mid-range, both when Rocky was working his way towards the inside and also when Rocky would sometimes take a step back to reset. There was a lot of inside grappling and maneuvering for position as Marciano was determined to stay in tight. Marciano tried mixing his attacks up, and Lewis was having more success when he had more space to operate. The former champion was also exhibiting very good defense, and he was frequently making Marciano miss the mark. As things progressed, Rocky started having more success finding ways to land, as he continued applying pressure and looking for ways to unload up close. Joe started having more difficulty taming Rocky in close quarters, but he was still usually effective at minimizing Rock's offense. By the middle rounds, the Brockton blockbuster was finding the mark with greater regularity, and he was landing heavy thudding shots both upstairs and down. Marciano was working more and more efficiently on the inside, and the pressure began slowing Lewis down. Lewis was still making Rocky miss at times, but Marciano was awfully persistent in his efforts to attack. In round eight, Marciano started really turning up the heat, and he nailed Lewis with some huge clubbing shots. Rocky then landed a perfectly timed left hook that sent Lewis down. The Brown Bomber appeared hurt and tired, but he did manage to beat the count. Marciano went right after him and started swinging for the fences, while Lewis was using every trick he had to try and fend him off. But Marciano was simply relentless, and he was really loading up on his shots. Lewis was against the ropes, and he got nailed by a monster right from the rock that sent Joe down and through the ropes. Referee Ruby Goldstein called a halt to the contest, and it was an eighth round stoppage victory for Rocky Marciano. On September 23, 1952, at Municipal Stadium in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, heavyweight world champion Jersey Joe Walcott put his title on the line against undefeated challenger Rocky Marciano. The champion came out aggressively and he started firing off some nice quick combinations right out of the gate. Before long, Jersey Joe drilled Marciano with a big left hook prompting the challenger to hold on. After a quick break from the referee, Jersey Joe landed another terrific left hook that knocked Marciano down. Rocky beat the count and Walcott moved in for the finish, but Marciano was able to tie him up and close the distance. The two proceeded to engage in some short explosive exchanges with Marciano wisely crowding the champion to prevent him from finding his range. As the action progressed, the two frequently traded stinging shots in close quarters, where both boxers were maneuvering for position to find better punching angles and create openings. Marciano was determined to keep attacking, and Jersey Joe was doing a good job evading the punches while sometimes firing crisp counters of his own. There were multiple heated exchanges in tight quarters, as both boxers clubbed away at one another while absorbing grueling punishment for their efforts. It was a competitive contest with some terrific action. 
Walcott was trying to keep Marciano at the end of his jab, and Marciano was trying to cut off the ring and close the distance to attack. But Walcott was the one who was consistently doing a better job winning this strategic battle of range. And because of that, Walcott was winning the fight. There was some brutal action late in the contest that saw both fighters landing some huge shots. But the champion was showcasing his craftiness, and he landed some sneaky hard shots that somehow or another nailed the mark. Rocky started firing off his jab a bit more, and Jersey Joe was doing a good job slipping punches and using movement, and this often resulted with Rocky missing his target. Then in the 13th round, at the exact same moment Walcott was trying to set a trap to land a big right, Marciano's right hand got there first, and Joe Walcott sank down to one knee, with one arm caught in the ropes before he completely slumped over. Walcott was out cold, and referee Charlie Dagger counted him out for the 10 count. Rocky Marciano had just become the new heavyweight champion of the world. And at the time of the stoppage, all three judges had Walcott ahead. On September 24, 1953, at the Polo Grounds in New York, New York, heavyweight world champion Rocky Marciano went up against former foe Roland Lestarza. The two had first met more than three years earlier when Rocky won a razor-thin split decision that was ultimately decided by a supplemental point system that New York was using at that time. Lestarza started things out by fighting cleverly in the rematch, and he built an early lead by effectively keeping Rocky on the outside and tying him up whenever he got too close on the inside. Lestarza was fighting effectively at range, he was smothering Rocky in tight, and he was exhibiting good overall defense, often making Rocky miss. Marciano was having a lot of difficulty igniting his offense, but as things approached the halfway point of the scheduled 15-rounder, Rocky began applying pressure more effectively. While Lestarza still had the right strategy, he was just no longer able to execute as effectively and Rocky really started turning up the pressure. Marciano was battling his way back and he began landing jolting power shots with greater regularity. Rocky had seized command of the momentum, and he was consistently finding ways to operate at angles that were favorable to him. In round 11, Marciano backed Lestarza to the ropes and unleashed a vicious combination that sent Lestarza down. The challenger made it to his feet, but Rocky was all over him, and referee Ruby Goldstein called a halt to the contest. It was an 11th round technical knockout for Rocky Marciano. On September 17, 1954, at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York, heavyweight world champion Rocky Marciano had an immediate rematch against former champion Ezard Charles. Marciano had won a 15-round decision against Charles earlier that year, marking Ezard as the only challenger to go the full 15-round championship distance with The Rock. Marciano tried jumping on Charles early at the start of the rematch, but Ezard was able to effectively neutralize his attack. Charles was trying to stay at range and box from the outside, and he was crowding Rocky up close on the inside. In round two, Marciano stung Charles with a few big rights that dropped the former champ. Charles rose to his feet, and he was able to fend off Rocky's follow-up. Charles was trying to establish his range on the outside, but Rocky was frequently closing the distance and was typically doing the better work. Charles busted Marciano's nose open in round six, and this seemed to rejuvenate Ezard's spirits as he began targeting Rocky's nose. Both boxers continued tactically trying to maneuver themselves into favorable positions. After round seven, there was a heightened sense of urgency when Rocky's corner informed him that they couldn't stop the bleeding. That appeared to have motivated Rocky, who proceeded to land a booming right hand that dropped the former champ again. Charles made it to his feet, but he looked very dazed, and Rocky's follow-up attack was something truly furious. Marciano landed a series of heavy punches culminating with a monster left that sent Charles down again, 
and this time, Ezard would not be beating the camp. It was an eighth round knockout for Rocky Marciano. On September 21st, 1955 at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York, heavyweight world champion Rocky Marciano put his title on the line against light heavyweight world champion Archie Moore. Things began with Archie looking to keep things at range where he could fire off his jab, and Rocky was looking to work his way inside and create favorable angles. But the old mongoose was a really smooth operator, and he was keeping Rocky off balance early on. In round two, Archie drilled Rocky with a quick counter right, and the champion went down. But Morciano was quick to his feet and didn't appear badly hurt. The match began evolving into something that involved a lot of tactical inside maneuvering. Rocky was trying to find his way into a position where he could land big shots, and Archie was looking to create openings of his own as he tried to work things back into mid-range where Archie had more of a tactical advantage. Marciano was trying to pin Archie up against the ropes, and he was landing some good punches whenever he effectively cornered more. But the old mongoose was exhibiting stellar defense, and Archie was slipping a lot of shots while landing the occasional sharp counter. In round six, Marciano landed a monster right hand that dropped more. Archie made it to his feet, and he looked a little wobbly. What transpired next was an astounding display of stamina from the Brockton Blockbuster, and an equally amazing exhibit of heart and courage from the old mongoose. Marciano again had more pinned up against the ropes, and the two champions were trading furiously. Marciano was breaking more down, and a crushing right hand dropped Archie for the second time. But the old mongoose persevered and he continued fighting on. But by this point, Marciano had all of the momentum, and nothing Archie could do would disrupt that. Another crushing right from Marciano dropped Archie for the third time in round eight. The old mongoose once again rose to his feet and bravely battled on, but by this point the damage had already been done. In round 9, Marciano threw a sequence of mean shots that were punctuated by a double left dropping Archie again, and this time, the old mongoose would not be beating the count. It was a ninth round knockout for Rocky Marciano in what turned out to be his last professional fight. If I had to rank these five victories, number one for me is obviously the victory when he won the championship against the immensely talented Jersey Joe Walcott. That one was a true war of attrition, and it was an incredibly dramatic come from behind knockout victory. For me, that's always been Rocky's most memorable and significant performance. Number two, I would say, was his fight against the old mongoose. Archie was truly a skilled boxer with a slick defense and a sneaky offense, and Marciano was like a machine in there against a superbly gifted opponent. For number three, I think it's the Charles rematch. The Cincinnati Cobra was the only man who ever went 15 rounds against Rocky, and in the rematch, it was pretty one-sided where Rocky stopped the crafty former champ. Number four, I'd go with the La Starza rematch. A lot of people thought La Starza deserved a decision in their first encounter, but Rocky settled unfinished business in this one, and after falling behind early on, he took charge and ultimately proved his superiority with the late stoppage. And finally, number five for me, the victory against Joe Lewis. I know a lot of people will probably disagree with this selection, because Lewis was old and clearly well past his best, but even still, Lewis was like a 5-1 to one favorite going into that match, and Lewis was still a formidable foe at that time, even at an advanced age far removed from his prime. Bottom line, if you're one of the three men who defeated the great Joe Lewis, then that inherently has to be one of your most notable wins. I'm sure there will be some who disagree with some of these selections, and of course these five victories alone in no way, shape, or form tell the entire story of Marciano's amazing career, but for me personally, these are definitely the top five most notable victories that jump to mind when I think of the great Rocky Marciano. Thanks for watching everyone.
Hope you enjoyed and have a great night.